Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day. Today is Tip of the Day number 50, a very auspicious milestone and one that I am very grateful to all of you for having helped me meet. I really, really appreciate it. And in uh, today's Tip of the Day, I am going to talk a little bit about helpers. Helpers are a thing that uh, Valve included with the Source Filmmaker to, well, help you do things. And uh, they are very, very easy to use. And they have a, um, a number of, of functions that I think you will find, well, <laughs> helpful. Uh, by way of demonstration, let me just show you what I'm talking about. In this case, what I've done is I've created a demo man and a beer bottle and uh, just spawned them in space, nothing special. I'm going to create an animation set for a new model. And I will type the word helper in here and clear the uh, the mod filter, and we will find that there are four helpers available, and they are in the user mod space. They are Axis Helper, Axis Helper Thick, Cone Helper, and Overlay Helper. And this one I'm going to spawn as Axis Helper. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you Axis Helper spawned right there next to the camera, as it should. So I'm going to grab the Axis Helper here, and I am going to move it a little bit over here. I'm just going to I'm going to position it actually I'm going to position it on top of this beer bottle so I can demonstrate one function of the axis helper. Uh, okay, let's get it. Uh, I probably should have okay. There we go. And I'm not going to make this perfect, just close. We're almost there. All right, that's looking pretty good, I think. Almost a little further forward. Okay, something that you may have noticed is that this thing is not oriented directly on the axis of the world. And that is because I would need to change the root transformed rotation. The, uh, the axis helper was created in line with the camera's orientation to the world. So it had a zero. It was basically set at zero degrees off of the camera's rotation. If I want to orient it to the world, I can just say zero, zero, and then I just double click the, uh, the root transforms rotation uh, thing here, and I just delete all this and set it to zero and press return. And then we can see that it is now oriented to world space, which is fine. So. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Axis Helper and I'm going to expand that and the beer bottle. I'm going to grab the beer bottle's uh, body, or excuse me, the transform, and the Axis Helper's root transform. And I'm going to drag the root transform of the Axis Helper to the body of the beer bottle. Now, what I've done is I've locked the bottle to the transform, or excuse me, I've locked the bottle to the helper so that if I move the helper around, the bottle moves. But notice that instead of, this is something that I can use to do things like rotate the bottle around a space. So instead of having the, if I wanted to change the bottle's orientation, I could grab it and move it. But if I wanted it to move in a circle around something, that's a little bit more difficult unless I use something like this, in, in which case it becomes trivial. So it's very easy to manipulate something like that. Another thing I can do is, uh, uh, why won't the bottle, did I clear it? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now I've cleared the, uh, uh, the axis helper's rotation. So it is no longer locked to the bottle. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to move the Axis Helper over to the demo man's head. And uh, this is a useful little trick you might find occasionally helpful for some certain effects that you might want to create. Because locks don't just have to be from one object to one object. They Two, one object can be locked to uh, another object, but then the, the object that was locked to can in turn lock to another object. And then to show you what I mean, I'm going to demonstrate here. I'm going to put the, put the axis helper right on top of the demo man's noggin here. Now I'm going to expand the demo's uh, head. Uh, where is it? Face? No. Uh, bip, bip head. That's the one. And uh, we are going to lock the bip head to the root transform of the axis helper, thereby making the head joint of the, or the, the demo man's head uh, uh, the parent of the helper axis, or the axis helper. 
And so now if I grab the demo man's uh, head and move it, the axis helper moves with it, which you would expect because we just locked it to it. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little trickier and I'm going to lock the axis helper's root transform to the bottle's root transform as well. So now when I grab the demo man's head and turn it, the helper axis turns, but the bottle turns as well. Now you could have probably simply locked the bottle to the demo man's head and, and uh, re uh, achieved the same effect, but this is the kind of thing that you can use to figure out ways to daisy chain locks through objects that don't have to be existing in the world. The help, and also another function of the helper, it's really visible from a distance. You can see it from a pretty good distance away and it allows you to be able to grab it fairly easily, which is um, um, if you're working with objects that are hard to find in space and you're sitting there going click, 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 no, that's not what I wanted or expanding and, and so forth. One of the things that a helper object can do, like if you need to manipulate finger joints or things like that, you can lock them to that and it might be uh, easier to grab stuff. Or if you're working with a tiny little model uh, and you need to work with it and you, you're a distance away from it or something like that with the camera, well, the helper can, can be very helpful with that. The helper is also, as you can see, it creates an orientation guideline, so it's effectively like a compass. You can always see what direction its orientation is. And, and if you put your imagination to, to work, you can imagine quite a bit of things that you can do with this. Uh, but, I mean, just the, the possibility of having intermediate locks is, is useful. I mean, in this case, now the demo man has an orbiting beer bottle, which is strangely appropriate for him, I think, uh, that uh, as we move his head around, the bottle moves with it. And uh, that's a kind of cool thing. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of things you can do with them. There are other helper objects as well. And uh, if you look at them, uh, the three here, the axis helper, axis helper thick. Uh, axis helper thick is just a more visible version of the axis helper model. The cone helper is pretty much the same, except that it is uh, intended to show a direction. And this is the kind of thing you would use, I think, mostly with a, a something that emits light or sound so that you can see the directionality of it. Uh, but again, you know, you can use it for whatever you see fit. It is just another model that you can throw in there and, and do whatever you like with. Uh, and the overlay helper, I'm not terribly familiar with what it does. I have not experimented with it much. But as again, I encourage experimentation. Uh, but I would say that the ones you're going to get the most use out of are going to be the axis helper and the cone helper. And uh, um, in order to make sure that they don't actually render, because, you know, these things are in the space, in order to make sure that they don't actually render, when you're ready to do your final rendering, just right-click the helper and say, and uncheck renderable, and it goes away. And if you want to just leave it unrenderable, it still has the same effect. Oh, and uh, I just, re I already, if I grab, and if I grab the demo's head again, see, I can actually, that's another thing that's nice about it, is I can change the uh, orientation of the helper axis independently. So I can do this with the demo's head and pull it to the right. Then I can grab the axis helper, even though it's not renderable. See, oh, I've got the, I've got the demo man's head selected as well. So let's, uh, let's put the demo man's head can you tell I'm tired? It's been a really long day. I apologize if I'm uh, coming across as very confused. Now if I grab the axis helper by itself and then change its orientation, see I can move the bottle rotation independently without losing that lock that I have. Now when I move the demo's head, the bottle still moves. And so that way I can move the bottle, I can change the orientation of an object without breaking the lock, moving it and relocking it. So I have a little bit more flexibility with that intermediate joint using the helper object which is just one other use of it. And uh, I am sure that if you get a little creative, you could probably find a, a trillion things to do uh, with these little helper objects. So there you go. That is tip of the day number 50, using helper objects for fun and profit. And I think I just broke this demo man's neck by spinning it all the way around. So there you go. Uh, and I am your friend, Jimmer Lins. I thank you for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed today's tip of the day, number 50. I will see you tomorrow, and in the meantime, enjoy using Source Filmmaker.